Um, to our July planning meeting. Um, first item on the agenda is 15124 declarations of any disclosable junior interests. None, thank you. 15224 apologies for absence, please, Alan. Our chair, we have apologies from uh, councillors Anne Blackbourne, David Blackbourne, uh, councillor Terry Jeremy, uh, Adam Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> Vic Peters, by Anna Rossman, Rockwood. Thank you. One, five, three, twenty-four minutes. To confirm the minutes of the planning committee held on the eleventh of June, which were received by full council on the twenty-fifth of June. I'm happy that they are true record of the assignment. So I was not able to attend that. So those that were, um, is that a true record that we can sign, please? Three. Five four twenty four planning applications to consider. First one A five one three twenty nine the meadows, please, Mark. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, can we move forward to the um, to the actual pictures? Of the first one? So um, yeah, you can see the red outline of the plot. There's a slightly unusual arrangement of the buildings. You've got the House there, which has uh, the left hand of those two garages, <laughs> semi detachable garage from the uh, property next door. Um, if we move down to the next one, we can see the actual plans. So, um, the purple um, sort of, uh, circle there shows the differences, the key thing there being. At the front, that garage, which belongs to the back house, um, is replaced on the front there, the garage doors with a, some windows. And this garage is basically being converted into more living space. Have a look at the northwest side where the purple thing is there. At the back of the garage behind that is a little extension area there. Um, and the rear and the other southeast side are not really connected. Um, the materials are listed there, and if we can go on to the next page, you can see the, the ground floor plans. So, um, dining and lounge as is, and the kitchen is being extended with the utility room at the back there behind the garage. So, uh, the front of the building is at the bottom of your screen, in fact, and that garage becoming um, an extra bedroom. And Yes, back to you, Chair. Any comments? Are no? we happy to support then? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely happy. Yep. Yes, a big piece of land. Great. Yeah. That's an easy one. Thank you. I've gone to B then, Bendale Green Lane. Yes, yeah, so we can have the page up. So again, you can see the uh, plot laid out there, and it's basically, this is one of those ones where they're actually checking whether they um, uh, need to apply for land permission uh, or whether it's within existing uses. So you've got the, the blue um, roof light windows there showing house, front of house, right. So uh, next page, please. Uh, on the left, existing uh, section through the roof, and on the right, um, the upstairs uh, new uh, living area is kind of detailed, all the dimensions of such are detailed. And if we have a look at the next page, we can see the actual plan. So we're back down to the ground floor now, uh, and basically pretty much everything is sort of changing around in a sort of musical chairs type fashion. Uh, kitchen becomes utility room, dining room, um, becomes the kitchen, uh, lounge becomes bedroom two, bedroom two becomes lounge, and bedroom one is the only one left that's sort of standing, as it were, <laughs> that uh, doesn't have anything at all happen to it. Uh, so you can see a sort of, a sort of, kind of uh, total rejigging of the space on the ground floor. And if we have a look at the next page, please, that is the layout of that area that you just saw in cross section uh, just before that. So that loft space becoming a uh, bathroom, uh, double bedroom and cupboard uh, with the stairs accessing it. Uh, if we go on to the next slide, you can see the elevations there. And again, the purple um, marks. Go up a little bit, Alan. We can see them both. Just being, oh yeah, super. So um, 
you can see the existing uh, elevations without the roof lights that you saw right at the beginning. Um, there's that new UPTC doors uh, on the east elevation up there. And basically the west is not really changing in any significant way. And finally, one more uh, is just the a, a slight alterations that window on the, the, the north side there. Um, back to you, Chair. Any comments? Oh, I'm happy to support. Yes. yes. <laughs> I must admit, I've just missed one, haven't I? Before you <laughs> reach your final conclusions on that, I should just point out the garage becoming a day room and um, day, day room and storeroom. There's one more plan there. Oh, are you still yeah. <laughs> sticking with your comments? Everybody's happy with that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so on to see then uh, St Helens Way. Yeah, so this is um, just a bit of detail really on the previous planning application. So the, the, the previous application was for the erection of the site on a fibre exchange, so uh, telecoms infrastructure uh, for the site. Uh, so this further details were requested. So this is a discharge of conditions in, uh, with regard to the drop curb and how drainage would be avoided uh, sort of going straight out onto the uh, highway. And highways have actually commented that they think it's sufficient and Breckland have now accepted that. But for largely for your information, therefore you can see the plans um, listed so uh, at the top there your greens the thing with the blocks on it is the uh, the building that houses that infrastructure and what you're looking at now is the uh, drop curve towards the highway at the bottom of your screen and yeah we've got the next one please and yeah again detail of that area showing where the existing con the connection point to existing drain goes in and I think there's just one, well, there's actually a couple more, but if we can have a look at the, yeah, there's a detail of the drop curb there, and it just shows, as I said, the cross section right across the drop curb. Um, back to you, Chair. Well, I assume it's more us to note. Um, Basically, yeah, it, it has been, I mean, it has been accepted by both Breckland and Highway, County Highway, so uh, as a fulfilment of that condition for the previous update. So I suggest we just have that as noted. Yep. Okay, on to D then, um, on and west of Norwich Road. Yes, yeah, so another uh, non-material amendment is being sought. Uh, basically, this is the uh, New King's Creek development, and it's the food shop as part of that development in some phase A. Um, the user of the shop, the client, if you like, or the person who's going to be running the shop, has asked for um, their start carping up staff car parking area to have uh, fencing around it for additional security. So this wasn't in the original plans and they're asking for basically Brent Breckland to provide them with a non-material amendment to have that area fenced. So uh, we've got the picture up on your screen there and the red uh, area is the area to be fenced. So it's the public car parking is the above this top right, and this is the star car parking area. And they're looking for that to be fenced with, if we have the next slide, uh, this kind of fencing, basically. Um, you can kind of ignore the gate, but uh, that kind of close boarded fencing, wooden boarded fencing, um, that's what they're looking for on that. Just on terms of the plan there, the, the entrance looks as though there's a couple of gates coming into there. Um, is that part of the application or is that... Um, it does it seem to be part of this application? Um, quite whether it was part of the original one. <laughs> we have a lot of documents that have to look through to be able to find that out, i But any comments and are we happy to... Sorry, sorry, Kaisel then, Mike. Um, I just had a bit of a question. So the red bubble, so are any of these trees going to be impacted? I wouldn't have thought so with that fencing, but the red bubble makes it look like they could be. I think it's it's purely identifying where the fencing is going. So the, the purple line is the fence that will be going through on the boundary of the, so I don't, wouldn't have thought there's any um, instrument on the trees. There's, there's no mention of it. And if you look at the purple line within that plan, um, it doesn't seem to be within 
it's arguable whether, whether the routes might be affected, I suppose, but there's no mention of an effect on that side. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting question, I suppose, but I'm not able to give any further information on that one. I think we could put that um, comment in there to say, uh, subject to you know, trees being done. My name, Terry and then Chris. Uh, can, I, can I just jump in? We use the microphones, please. Um, oh. Some of the more senior <laughs> members up here are struggling to hear. Sorry, did you, wait? did you wish me to repeat anything? Uh, no, no, you've just got eight. Uh, okay, Mike, then, please. Uh, my microphone is on. Can you hear me? <laughs> no, all right. I'm, yes, OK. I'll put my head mark and my voice on in a minute, not to worry a bit. Um, I'm not fantastically happy with this for a, for a reason that we meet quite often, sadly, which is there appears on this map, I thought it right, to be a sort of a grey semicircle around here, which I presume is a footpath. Is that correct? Again, I believe so, at least they say. It's certainly, I think, whether it's a... Whether it's a <laughs> I guess they use the word footpath, that requires a right of way, but I think certainly it would be a surface path. Yeah. So, so my concern is that we are putting up a fence I take to be six foot, it doesn't actually say that anyway, but it was a figure 1800 somewhere. Yeah. I can only assume it's six foot. Yeah, it's six. So, next to a footpath, you are, you are sort of having a nice view over on one side, you've got an incredibly boring wooden fence. And I, I'm not personally in favour of that, so I wouldn't be happy with this proposal. I understand about the need for security. Are they trying to stop? What are they trying to stop people wandering in? In which case, I thought four, four, six, or five would have been enough, and would have been much more in keeping with the feeling of the estate, which is something which you a word that's supposed to mean that people are together. This divides people off bad news against it. Terry, did you have a, anything else? Uh, any other thing? Chris, did you want to come in? Were you on the? Here, what had? Okay. So we've just got two comments in relation to the two comments in, in relation to the planning application. Firstly, I think we need to decide whether we're a supporter. Um, if we are, then we can make um, Hazel's comment and, and Mike's. If we're against, we can use those as some of the objections. But can we have a show of hands as a supporter. Can you repeat what Hazel said? Because I've never heard it. Sorry. Can you repeat what your thoughts were, please, Hazel? I was just asking if the surrounding trees were going to be impacted by the work. Okay, thank you. So, can we have a show of hands uh, for the supporter? And show of hands for against. So, two against. <laughs> so, <laughs> give it, and everybody else is abstaining, one assumes. <laughs> Okay, so if we're against, then um, as the vote has gone, we will be objecting on the grounds that Mike has suggested that it's um, not ideal in terms of the aesthetics of the estate, but also the security of, I think, of individuals. If you come around a blind corner and you've got a fence, you, you're not seen. Um, so I think that's probably a relevant point to make. We, we pay lip service, Mr Chairman, every, every, we pay lip service, Mr Chairman, in, in all these meetings to the importance of walking and indeed cycling. And what do we do? We make the walking as boring as we can. Why? Sorry, I showed my hand earlier. Um, I just thought sort of froze a minute ago. Um, I think as well, if we um, maybe add, it's just, for me, it's the style of fence, just a pure black out style fence. I think a picky style, if they need, they need a fence, they're going to argue they want one, but it's not a picky style one where we can at least see through it, it lies with you a bit better than just a wall of, of wood, in my opinion. Right, so in, in terms of comments, then we're going to object on the basis that we, we don't like the fence full stop, but even if the fence is going up, we feel it's too high, and the style of the fence is such that it doesn't add to the aesthetics of the building. Happy with that, and then obviously we take into great up Hazel's comments that we wish for any of the fencing works to, to damage the, the trees that are there. Thank you. On to um, E then, Guildhall Street. 
not saying a 25 vote. <laughs> so, first of all, please note this plan, please note that it's wrong. So, the, on the application, the map that you've been shown, the map, oh, sorry. Uh, so on this plan, the map that you've been shown is incorrect in terms of identifying the property in question. So that is number 25A, however, it isn't the building that the application refers to, which is part of Townsend House. So we're looking the other side of the road, and in fact, just sort of above where it says number 16, uh, we are looking at uh, the, just to the right of where it says Townsend House. So that area on the upper story of that building and if we go on to the next um, picture, it's that one. So you can see uh, in between the two shops there, there's a white sign uh, just above that doorway. So it's the dentists who are along the top floor in uh, that building. Uh, that is the front street view, if you like. And this is the rear entrance in the car park. And the yellow uh, circle there shows the existing uh, infrastructure. So the application of the proposed installation of six air source heat pumps for the building, uh, that says so what they've got at the moment. If we have a look at this plan, this actually shows where the buildings, those pumps will be in the building and also outside. Now, again, I apologize because I was kind of confused by which way around the building is. And uh, actually at the top there is the rear of the building. So, <laughs> so uh, because I was looking at it from the other side of the street, thinking it was on the other side of the road. So that at the top there is the rear of that building. And if you see, if you see the next one, um, then you will see that that makes more sense. So again, we're looking at the rear of the building here and from the car park and that yellow circle shows the, uh, the same area there. And the, um, the blue circle is basically the one that's going to be retained of the existing uh, the application. And you can see those uh, in red and the new uh, infrastructure that goes with it there as well. Okay. Sorry. It's your son. I think on, uh, on principle we should reject this. If they can't find, if they can't show us where the building is that provide drawings, I really don't see why we should pass this through. I, I really. Uh, quietly believe this is almost insulting. Thank you. Any further coins? Necessarily agree, um, and I do think they are making a decision to install air source heat pumps, which is positive. <laughs> um, in terms of uh, environmental sustainability, so I don't think that we should just throw it out. Yeah, I agree with uh, Hazel on that point. I was going to say it's, it's good they're using air source heat pumps, but don't think anybody's going to want to get to that view from the car park, so it might be a support to it, I don't think. We know that our port health station is considering the laws and misleading and stuff, and that is a bit irritating, particularly when that private application earlier was done so well. Chris? So if, if just piss on the side and hold it in. Hold, hold it in. Shut up. <laughs> okay. I must admit, when I first saw this, I got quite not. I agree with Terry. I think if they haven't got to do is to get their plans right, then we should send it back and tell them, get it right. Okay. Um, first thing, to be honest with Paul, not bearing in mind to say comment. Hands up for those who want to support. Mm -hmm. well, four. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Those against? So we've got three. So four carries three. So we are going to support. Um, I think we can make comment that the application is mislabeled and there's 
in the wrong address. And we feel that that should uh, be a <laughs> major item that uh, he should identify the correct property that he wants the planning application to be in for. Um, do we have any further comments in terms of the aesthetics of the, the actual equipment, or are we just happy to support? It's not you know, great to look at, um, but unfortunately it's the way of the world and we will be going down this route with uh, things in the future, I think. But uh, at least it's not the Guildhall Street side. Uh, no further comments? We'll that's note the I, I just think it would be difficult to oppose this on aesthetics when you go and have a look at what the rest of that car park looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, moving on then to tree planning applications on 5524. First one, um, Breton Council, a group of ash trees. Take that one, Mark. Yes, thank you, Chair. So, um, yeah, it's just slightly down. So, um, the address on this, again, is slightly confusing, is the Audrey. The trees are actually on the opposite bank to the nearest <laughs> property in that sense. So, I suppose we've there isn't actually a, an obvious address here, but um, we are talking about the other side of the river. So I've twisted the um, uh, uh, map showing the numbers of the tree there round so it lines up with um, Springhouse. So that, that sort of U shape thing you can see in the uh, corner of the box there is Springhouse. So that is basically where they are opposite uh, that bit of Audrey. So if we can move on to the photos. Um, there's quite a few photos in the application. I've picked out some of them, which hopefully will show you uh, the most sort of um, uh, obvious examples and give you an idea of basically where they are. Um, and if we can just see the, um, you can see that it is basically a group of ash trees. There's a lot of um, uh, dead wood and problems with them that have been identified by the tree surgeon's report. And um, uh, so uh, basically, um, what we are looking at there, and I, I must admit, I haven't included the actual report in there, but it says of the eleven trees there, they're looking to fell eight of them, and the remaining three will have dead wood removed from them. <laughs> if you really want to know which they are, you can end up. But basically, there are eleven trees there, and I think so eight to be felled. Um, on the grounds of uh, basic safety and poor position and, and leaving and dying and moving uh, over towards uh, St. Andrews. And as I said, with three to be uh, retained or largely retained, but with some proof and lot of dead weight. Thank you. So this is an application by Brecon Council, who systematically have cut most of the trees down on that tree-lined avenue, as it was. Um, this is a significant area leading up to the bridge now, so there'll be absolutely nothing along there. It doesn't mention anywhere that there's going to be any replanting of any kind. And when this has come up in the past, they've consistently just ignored us and not done any replanting. So we will end up with a point where we end up with that part of the river completely denuded of all trees uh, in total. Um, so whilst I realise that the work has to be done, I'm, you know, I'm disappointed that there is nothing mentioned about um, a, a new start with different trees uh, that are more suitable to the area, to be frank. Hazel. Um, there's two things I'd like to comment on. Firstly, they haven't said when they plan for the work to be done, and these could potentially, with the IVB bird nesting sites, and could also, with being old trees, um, have maternity bat roosts, so it would be good to comment if we can on either they do a survey or wait until the end of the breeding season. Um, and secondly, the government website recommends leaving in place either doing a coronation cut and reducing the size of the wood so that you're left with some wood in place or using the dead wood in the area because it's very important for invertebrates and uh, biodiversity generally. So if we would like to make a comment and then leaving some of the wood in place. Any further comments? No, I just want to make an observation. I think that approximately 50 inches in height, is that meant to be 50 foot in height? 
bigger than 50 inches. Um, and obviously, Mac has made the point about losing trees down there, and you know, over the years we've lost quite a, a number. Um, and you know, yes, they are going to go. You can see them leaning. And, uh, you know, probably accept that you know, some of them have to be done. So, in terms of supporting, objecting, I presume this are comments that we've got to make. Are we a supporter? No, are you? Well, we can make the comment that we yeah. must make. That's really important. So, are we a supporter subject to making comments then? Yes. And Shelley, please. Yeah. So, we're supporting um, and making comments that we would like to see, in terms of Hazel's points, some of the would um, prune back and left in situ for the reasons that you've got. I hope you'll be able to give <laughs> some word to word comments that we can put on that. Um, and then we would like to see some kind of replanting scheme put in place so that we do have an avenue of trees um, to, I think, and climate change as well. A shaded area is something that we should be pushing towards rather than just blend. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask them, assuming that they ignore our request for replanting, uh, can we replant along there as a town council? Not. No, we wouldn't want to. <clears throat> I think, is that Bretton's land there? Uh, it is Bretton's land. That, yeah. that bit, sorry, that bit is. The town council does that in several states of the river, but not. So I think we, we, can, we can definitely put the request to get, get it done and um, hopefully <coughs> Brecon Cancers may be able to twist some arms up there because <laughs> we're always seeing trees being on offer and they seem to be coming out of the woodwork, excuse the pun, that um, every so often we get a, an option of these trees and we think well actually could we have some where we want them rather than being thrust into places where they never thrive. Um, May. Yeah, I'd like to make another point on it, really. And the reason the trees are being cut down is because they've not been managed throughout their life at any point. So, you know, they've, they've not managed it. They've now got to cut them down and they're not going to put any new trees up in place. So, you know, to say that they've got any any green sort of background or any any desire to improve the environment is just bizarre. Right, so the, you want to come back, Hazel? Oh, I was just going to say, because you've been um, my comments all the time with the work. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think we've got those uh, reinforced max points about the re replanting and also the management of the existing trees um, in there would be do with the uh, more timely rather than waiting for things to come down. And, uh, Thank you. On to B then. Houston Yard. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this one is a. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, so we are one, two, two. We work in the conservation area, so it's not actually a, um, a listed tree as such. Uh, previous permission to pollard a beech tree back to previous pollard. Points and they are now requesting that to basically be done again. And here is the tree in question. <coughs> Any comments? <coughs> um, just to repeat myself, can I just come for the next one as well? I was just going to say um, the nesting location because they can either carry out survey or go outside of the nesting season. And can you write that for the next one? Thank you. Any other comments? So, supporter subject to um, bird nesting comments that has made. Want to see them on to seven grammar school we in Beach? Uh, yeah, so as you say, that, sorry, that the grammar school um, it is number T36. On the sketch, uh, it overhangs the bridge tree. It, is, it has both a TPO and a conservation area. Um, you, you can see on the sketch there, it's right towards the bottom end of the picture there. And they are basically requesting a reduction in the canopy of that tree. 
Any points? Hazel. We've got Hazel as well about your three the next thing, so that's, that's standing. <laughs> Um, I'll just make an observation that that does in the little driftway that goes up there um, and it does for years the buses used to hit that as they come down there obviously bus stations have moved now so it's uh, probably not so impact, but uh, man. Uh, I think it's worth uh, it's worth agreeing with this and going along with it but I think it's also worth making the point that we actively encourage people to maintain the trees and look after them. So where we're going back and repollarding trees back to their original condition, great because you're maintaining it, and this is exactly the same. You know, don't leave it until it's such a problem that you've got to cut it down. <laughs> well, thank you. We're just a supporter subject of the bird nesting, and uh, I think good to see that it's being managed. Okay, then on to 15624, any late planning applications? It's been, there has been one that was just a no comment uh, application that came through today, so I'll, I'll put that into the next chat, but it's, it's a no comment, it's just a legal interpretation of the planning, uh, planning framework. So I'm just a simple accountant. So 15724, decisions of variance. Right. There actually, is, there actually is one. It was to do with the uh, one of the houses that were putting air conditioning units on the outside. We, 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 we spoke about it uh, uh, about three or four months ago. We supported it, but it has been rejected. So we didn't have any comments as to why we supported it. Oh my God. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, we had an email from the Bradman saying the people who put the telephone mast in by the grammar had appealed against the objections, but their appeal was dismissed. So, I don't know what happens now when the mast is going to be taken down. This is, a, this is a temporary one. This is the temporary one, isn't it? Yeah, temporary for a year or so. Yeah. Three years now, yeah. That came in really late this afternoon. To say that the, the, the appeal had failed. The appeal, the appeal had failed. So that they, okay, so they have to remove the past. In essence. Well, we can't do anything further. We'll just note that. Um, they've got to come back again on that if they want to. 15824, then items to refer to the Great Cup Partnership. Can come up today. So 15924 community engagement. The two earth shattering tonight. It, it is it worth communicating about those trees along the uh, spring walk then, just to get out ahead of what people will really know from this. I mean, that's going to make a big change, isn't it? It's not yeah. nothing as fair comment, and although it's not our trees, we can be you know, informing the public that this works. Well, Breckland have put the application into. And cut them down. Let you know, people know. It's good it's, idea. Otherwise, how long get it in the neck with all these people come and say, "Why are a couple of little trees there?" It's, it's especially you know, in advance than having them raising questions and then doubt who's responsible for what. In the past. I think it's a good idea. Yes, yes that's from my me those comments. Thank you. One six zero twenty four. Committee officers update. Yeah, no updates. But I would just like to thank Mark for his. Support. I, I can promise you that I think he's saved about 10 years of my life by doing this. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Okay, with those thanks, uh, all the meeting to a close. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it's really you can't believe that.